of your life, what would I see minute by minute every day? I bet you, I guarantee you, I would see sleep in there. Is that right? Did anybody pass on that? No, nobody sleep. How about eating? Yes? Okay, and Jeanette made sure I added coffee. Coffee. I'm a tea drinker, so I have my tea every day. Do um, you guys spend time at work? Family? Rest? Play? Relaxation? Device time? Self-care time? Everybody's got these things in your daily life, in your daily routine. My question to you is, do you also have a category, a space in your schedule daily to meet with the Lord? Is that in your daily schedule? Would I see that in that minute-by-minute printout of your daily schedule? A space for prayer, space for worship, and a space for engaging in God's Word. Would that come through in your schedule? What value do you place on your relationship with the Lord, and would that value reflect through your daily schedule? Would I be able to see it? Um, for myself, I've, I've been blessed. Um, I've been blessed to know the Lord since I was a young kid. Grew up in a Christian home, and, and like I've been blessed with that. I've been blessed to see God's Word as important, right? And, and for my whole life, I'm, you know, I've been blessed as well. I wasn't one of those wanderers or I wasn't one that went through a crazy rebellion stage. So I never walked away from the Lord. I've had a life of living and walking with the Lord, which is a huge blessing. But I have to ask myself that question as well. What value does my relationship with the Lord actually have in my life? And can I, can I gauge it? Can I measure my, my, the value that I've placed on that relationship? Um, how much time and effort do I spend in time in prayer? How much time and effort do I spend in worship and engaging with God's Word daily? Um, now don't get me wrong. It's not about what we do, right? It's about what He has done. What he has done is done, and it's finished, and it's, that's it, right? So it's not about works. But there should be a spot where I should see, where we should be able to see evidence of that relationship actually happening, right? So it's not about works. You guys get me on that, right? It's not about what I do. But yet, I guess I shouldn't say but because that cancels. So and yet, right? And yet, I should still see evidence that there is an actual relationship. There should be something happening. So what if, like, my relationship with my wife, Jeanette, what if I never spoke with her? What if we never spent time together, never went out, never had fun? There was no intimacy. There was no, nothing there, right? There'd be no relationship. You'd go, well, you're not really married because you're not spending life together. Does that make sense? Right? Isn't it the same? With our life and our relationship with the Lord, shouldn't we see time happening? Shouldn't we see doing things together? And I would propose that maybe prayer, worship, and engaging in God's Word could be, or maybe should be, evidence of a relationship with you or with me and the Lord. My relationship with the Lord has been up and down over the years, right? I've been steady with the Lord. I've known him, but it's still been up and down. Everybody goes through seasons, right? Go through seasons in life. The older I get, I'm like, man, there's a lot of seasons. Some of them come over and over again, right? There's seasons of joy, seasons of stress, seasons of, what else did I put in here? Contentment. A good one of seasons when you're like in the desert. Those are always the most fun. Right? Who likes the season of the desert? Everybody hand goes up. No, they're not. Um, how about seasons of newness or revival? Seasons of darkness. We just can't see. Or then there's seasons of when you're just head over heels in love. If you walk with the Lord any number of time, like for any, any period of time, you've gone through those seasons, right? One thing for me, um, sorry, one go back there. Oftentimes, I, I will find like, my 
my rhythm of prayer, my rhythm of worship, my rhythm of spending time in God's Word will change with the season that I'm in, right? It just, I might have more time, I might have less time, I might be more engaged with the Lord, I might be crying out to Him if I'm in the darkness time, right? But there's, there's those seasons, the rhythms of what my life looks like changes depending on maybe what season I'm in. But one thing for me that I, I've got to be really thankful on is that it has been instilled into me from a young age the importance of God's Word. It's just been instilled into me. My dad, every morning, every morning, and even if I didn't catch him, I know he did, because every morning my dad used a daily bread booklet, right? You guys get these out at church. Every church gives these out. They're awesome. Um, he would be in his daily bread booklet with his Bible, and he'd spend time with God's Word every morning. And my mom was constantly always teaching us kids Bible verses, get us to memorize them, and trying to pray and, and just really just getting us into God's Word all the time. And so for me, it was established from a young age. God's Word is important. And it built that into my life from a young age. I'm thankful for that. Um, so, any of you caught on to something here yet? I have not been saying, or I have not been referring to, I've been saying prayer, worship, and engaging with God's Word. I haven't said reading the Bible. Can you catch the difference between that? Just reading the Bible or engaging in God's Word. Now, there is value, a huge value, when you can actually just read God's Word and daily read God's Word. Sit down and read. Two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, half an hour, two hours, three hours, whatever else, that amount of time. Awesome, right? There's, there's value in that. You're getting God's Word in you, right? You're being fed. But there's a difference between just reading. And don't get me wrong, if that's where you're at, awesome. Just read. At least do something. Get God's Word in you daily, right? If that's where you're at. But there's a difference between just reading and engaging in God's Word, right? Okay. PowerPoint. We're going to start here, I think. Yes. First time for me putting a PowerPoint together. So if it's like really bad, let me know. Jeanette helped me a little bit, and then she said, you're on your own. I'm so awesome. We'll figure this out. Um, so hopefully it works. You know, why, why, is, why is God's Word even important? Why should we value God's Word? So Psalm, Psalm 119, 9 through 11. Go with me there. How can a young person stay on the path of purity by living according to your word? I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. God's word is powerful, right? It's powerful. We hide it in our hearts. It's going to help us not sin. That's huge. Okay? Why? Another reason why we should value God's word. Hosea 4, 4 verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also reject you as my priest. Because you have ignored the law of your God, I also will ignore your children. The knowledge here that it's talking about is referring to a head and a heart knowledge of God's Word. The entirety of God's Word. Head knowledge, heart knowledge. Can they connect? Go with me to the next one. Why should we value God's Word? Hebrews 4, verse 12. For the Word of God is alive and it's active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart powerful it's powerful it's sharp it cuts us and we often need cutting don't we we often need the surgeon's knife to expose what's going on in our life right second timothy 3 16 through 17 all scripture is god breathed and it's useful for teaching rebuking correcting and training in righteousness so that the servant of god may be thoroughly equipped for every good work we need it we need God's word, right? One last one. Why should we value God's word? Joshua 1, verse 8. Keep this book of the law. That's this book right here. Keep the Bible. Always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night. Day and night. So that you may be careful to do everything written in it. How can we do everything written in it if we're not meditating on it, right? If we don't know it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Is anybody a little bit more convinced of the value of why we should value God's Word? Anybody? Anybody? A little bit? Yes? 
Yeah, I got one? Okay, good. Good, I at least got one. Thanks, Kelly. appreciate it. Okay, so I'm not like one of those scholarly, deep theological thinker guys. It's, you know, I've, I've, done, I've done Bible college. I've got my BA. I've spent a lot of time at God's Word, but it doesn't, like, fire me up, right? I'm, I'm not like, yes, I get to sit down in the morning or in the evening or whenever and spend, like, three hours just, like, studying this and digging into it. It's like, that's not what fires me up. So through my life, I have struggled with how to engage with God's Word. Anybody else? Or am I the only one? Anybody else struggled with how to engage with God's Word? It's like two or three of you, I don't believe you. The rest of you don't believe you, okay? Most of us, a lot of us, struggle with how do we engage with this book? Like, what do we do with it? Some days it's like, it's alive, and other days it's like, Phew. right? Am I the only one? Come on. Okay, I'll get you guys involved in a little bit. That's good. I'll get you. I know how to do it. So, in the last few years, it's been probably a couple years for me now, I've, I've started doing something different. And I, you know what? I've, I've instilled this in my life since I was young, and I've, I've actually been in God's Word morning and night. I start my day and end my day in the Bible, somehow. And it usually was just reading, which was good, right? It's building foundations. God's Word is in here. I don't know where it's found half the time, but it's in here, right? Um, but my mom would babysit our kids for us when, when they were all younger. I would say probably Caleb was like five and Maya was seven and, and Hannah would have been nine. And I took the kids to my mom's for the day when I worked because I worked next door to my parents' place. And mom would babysit them and watch them during the day and give Jeanette a break. So it's like two or three times a week sometimes, right? Give Jeanette a hand. And uh, my mom had the privilege, the privilege that all parents get the privilege of. But my mom got to join our privilege and our pain of our kids constantly arguing and complaining. You've been through that stage if you're a parent and you had younger kids, maybe older kids still, right? It's this constant, they just bickering and complaining and arguing amongst themselves or with you and they just never stop, right? Just never stop. My mom's like, that's enough. And so she brought up, she's like, my mom, that's my mom. Remember I said, like, my mom loves God's word. Always bring God's word into it. So she brought up Philippians 2, 14 through 16. And it says, Do everything without grumbling and arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. Now my mom, in my mom's wisdom, decided that that was a little bit too wordy and maybe hard for my kids and me and my wife to memorize. So my mom, and then we have it there, the paraphrase yet. My mom, so I said paraphrase a la my mom. As according to my mom, my mom paraphrased Philippians 2, 14 through 16a, and she said, I will do all things without complaining and arguing so that no one can blame me. I am a child of God living in a very bad world. But I shine as a light in this world, and I hold tight to God's word. I still know it. It's like 10, 15 years later, and I still know it. I actually called each of my kids, or talked to Caleb and then Hannah and Maya. And I was like, I will do all things without. Hannah had part of it. Maya almost knew all of it, and Caleb, well, about the same as Hannah. But you know what? They still remembered it and, it, and it clicked something. When my mom did this with us and my kids, it changed our household. It changed changed the atmosphere in the house. We were learning God's word. Paraphrase version of that, yes, but we were learning God's word and it changed our household. It changed our life at that time. Things calmed down a bit, which was awesome. So this is kind of where I want to spend the rest of our morning, if you guys are willing to go here with me, okay? And uh, it has to do with paraphrasing. And it's what I've been doing the last few years. You can take it or leave it. If it works for you, awesome. If not, that's fine. Um, but I have started paraphrasing God's Word in the morning. Now, to paraphrase, I've got the definition of paraphrasing, is to state something written or spo spoken, but to state it in different words. It is important because it shows you can understand the source well enough to write it in your own words. Right? If you don't understand it, you can't then write it in your own words. You have to actually wrestle with it and think it through. So in order to, to paraphrase, I first need to understand it. 
So that means I can't just read God's word and move on. I have to actually stop. I have to engage with it. I usually have to read it two, three, four times, break it down into chunks, and then write down my paraphrase for it. And more often than not, I am walking away where in the mornings, I actually remember what I read later on in the day, what I read in the morning, because it sticks, because I've actually engaged with God's Word, right? Because it engages a whole different part of your brain and your mind, and everything kind of goes together, right? Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. We've got to get it. We've got to get it from here to here, and somehow, for me, it's really helped. Okay, so uh, we're my passer outer people. I've got a handout for everybody. Everybody that's here, you have a pen or a pencil in front of you. Make sure you get one. Everybody's going to get involved. Everybody's going to get a sheet. And we're going we're gonna to work through. If you guys are game, anybody game? If you're not game, just ignore me. No, don't. Um, I want everybody involved this morning, okay? I'm going to make you do some work. And you're going to get some stuff out of this morning on your own. Okay? Yeah? Are we there? Okay, so everybody's got a pencil. There's pencils and pens. If there's not enough in front of you, put up your hand if you don't have enough pencil or pen in front of you guys so that everybody's got something to write with. Everybody's got a piece of paper. And I've totally lost track of time, Morgan. What time do I have till? Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. I love it. Um, seriously? Okay, so we got a bit of time still? Okay. Good. Okay. Um, we'll just, we're we're going we're gonna to go through this together. Okay. All right. So here's, here's what I do. And I, and I hope you guys are kind of just on board. I know this might be a little bit different. You, you know, some of you like to just sit here and zone out. No, this morning you get to be involved. Okay. Not happening. Okay. I might call on a few of you too to, to see what's going on. So, so track with me. Okay. I start my times in the morning with prayer. I don't, over, don't ever like just go into God's Word and just read it. Right? Because I don't know what's going on. I need Holy Spirit to reveal to me what God's saying. Right? So start with prayer. Then what I do is I'll, I'll, I'll pick a passage. And for me, what I've done over the years, I have caught on to my dad's habit of the daily bread booklet. Okay? I love it. I've done this for decades now. Um, and in the Daily Bread booklet, it's got a passage or a section of Scripture, and it's every day, and it's random. I love random, okay? I love random. I'm the kind of person that goes into the music, and I always select a random. Shuffle it for me. I don't want to know what's coming next. I enjoy it, right? So that's the way it is for me. Random is good, right? If you don't like random, pick a, pick a, pick a, uh, a passage or pick a, ver uh, a chapter or a book of the Bible, and work your way through the Bible, or we'll go through the Bible beginning to end, whatever it is, however you want to, engage with God's Word, right? I just, I like the random, it's good for me. And it breaks up into kind of bite-sized chunks that you can deal with sometimes. You can do it, you can do it in five minutes, you can do it in 10, 20 minutes, depending how much time you want to spend, right? Okay, so first, what? What did I say? What do you want to start with? Somebody tell me, somebody engage. Prayer. Okay, these people are loud, I'm not hearing much over here. Let's, a little bit more over there. Okay, good. Okay, then... Dive into the scripture. Read it. Read it once. Okay? And probably the first time, if you're like me, you read it through and you didn't catch anything because you were still thinking about something else. Right? Right? You with me? Yeah? You read it once. It's like, I didn't catch that. So you got to stop yourself. Read it again quite often. Right? Read it again. Okay. Then what you start to do is you break it up into bite-sized bite chunks. Okay? Like thoughts that make sense. Right? Different thoughts. Okay? Break it up so that stuff goes together, okay? Now, just a little side thing. Always remember, keep it in context, okay? You can just go into it, pick a passage, and you can read it totally out of context. Sometimes I need to read a little bit what happened before and a little bit after and read it in context, okay? If you're new to Scripture, you're new to the Word of God, go find a commentary. Go find a concordance. Talk to a trusted friend that loves the Lord that's been walking longer with than you, right? Or talk to Clint after him. Right, Clint, this is what I got out of it. Is this even good or am I totally off base, right? So there, there can be a danger with paraphrasing where you can just make up your own scripture from it. And that's not where we want to go. We want to just get God's word in us 
And that means we've got to in, engage with it, right? You guys with me? Tracking with me? Okay, we've got a passage in front of us, okay? You've got it break, broken down for you guys. So, who's got a nice, nice loud voice for me that wants to just stand up where you are and pray for our time right now that as we engage in God's word, that God reveal himself to us? Somebody from over here. I picked on you guys. Somebody from over here, a loud voice wants to stand up and pray. Just like a two-second prayer. Yes? Okay, go for it. Nice and loud. Okay, I'm going to read it, the whole passage in its entirety first. You guys have it broken up already. Don't get ahead of me yet, okay? Stay with me. I'm going to read the whole entirety. So follow along up there or if you need to. But there, I'm going to read it entirely. Then I'm going to read it again. I'm going to read it twice. And then we're going to break it down into chunks, which I've done for you on the paper, okay? When we get to the chunks, on each chunk, as I've said, I've done it verse by verse, and then I put the last two verses together because I kind of create a thought together on their own. And then I'll give you guys my paraphrase. But we're gonna give, I'm going to give each of you, I'm going to give you guys time to actually write your own version of your own paraphrase for each verse as we go. Make sense? Okay? I'm going to see what you guys get out of this this morning. I hope... I just I know God's going to reveal himself to some of you in ways that you've never seen before. So Romans 8, 31 through 39. And I did this myself probably about two weeks ago or so in my morning devos, and it was just really came alive for me. So what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, as it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Have you heard this passage before? Yes? Okay. You guys want me to read it again or are you ready to get into it? I'm going to read it again. You guys didn't speak loud enough. I'm like half deaf. I'm still waiting for another surgery um, for my ears. But okay, here we go. Okay? This time, slow your mind down and don't just zone out, but engage with the passage as I'm reading it. Okay? What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Love of Christ. Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No one in all these things, no, sorry, no, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor demons, not the present or the future nor any powers, neither height or depth or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You guys ready? Okay. We're going to go to verse 31. I'm going to read it. You're going to spend a few moments. Don't cheat. Not for your neighbors. I want you to do your own. Okay. Everybody's got a pen, pencil, and something, and the paper to write on. Okay. There we go. Read it to yourself. I'll read it out. You can read it yourself. Engage with it. I'll give you a couple minutes. So what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Go, paraphrase it. Here it is. If God is in your corner, 
How can you even think about worrying if anyone comes against you in any way? That's how I paraphrased it. Anybody close? Anybody close to what I got? No, am I way off track? No, are you guys close? You're in the ballpark? People still tracking with me? It's still that corner. Yes? Okay, I got a hand over there. Okay, good. Good. Wonderful. Okay, you guys ready to move on? Okay, verse 32. Okay, he who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Verse 32, here's my paraphrase. God the Father was willing to sacrifice his only child for us. Don't you think that he will also want to take care of us and give us all that we need and more? Moving on. Verse 33. Okay. Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. You guys getting it? Get into a rhythm? Okay, verse 33, my paraphrase. Nobody is strong enough to bring anything against us because our God won't allow it. Verse 34. Is that where we're at, 34? Yeah? Okay. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is the one who died and then came back to life. He is the one who is now in heaven going to bat for and looking out for us. Put it into your own words, right? You're getting it from here into here. Okay, verse 35. Guess what? If you haven't finished, you can finish at home later. Awesome. Nice. Here's mine. By this time, by this time I was getting excited. Okay. So come on. That's so good. Do you think that anything can, anything or anyone could ever take you away from Christ? Question mark, exclamation mark, question mark, exclamation point. I'm getting into it, right? Nothing, absolutely nothing is that strong, right? Have some fun with this. Don't just be humdrum. Like, get into God's word, okay? Verse 36. We're going to speed it up a little bit. We're going to try. We'll see. As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Okay? This is what I wrote. I said in the Old Testament, it says, because that's what it's referring to, right? As it was written. As it is written, it's referring to the Old Testament. So I captured that because I needed to remind myself that that's what was happening. In the Old Testament, it says, our lives are constantly at risk. Others think of us as targets to destroy. Okay, verse 37. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Mine is, yet it still doesn't matter or bother us because we know the character and strength of the one who holds us. Okay, last section. Last section. Right over here. Get it ready. Okay, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons not present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hey, here's mine, my last one. And I didn't change this from when I did it. This is just how it was when I wrote it that morning. You want to know something that I'm sure of? I'm sure and confident that there is absolutely nothing, and I mean nothing, that is strong enough to take us away from God's love that is in, that is from God's love that is from and in Jesus. Do you guys get something out of that? Okay, something I've failed to mention um, that I'll mention now is some mornings, I just don't want to paraphrase. I just don't want to do it. I don't want to do the work, right? It's a bit of work, right? It's a bit of work, but it, it does work. So some mornings, I will just summarize Right? And some passages are just really hard to paraphrase, but you can summarize. You can just quickly say, this is what it was about, right? So I've done a quick summary. As you guys were doing yours, I did a quick summary of this whole passage. See if it works, okay? Didn't have time to vet this, so hopefully it's good. All right. This is, this is the whole passage. God's got you. Don't worry. He gave his son he sacrificed. 
He makes us right. It's all about Jesus and what he has done. Nothing can separate you from him. We are at war. Our lives are at risk. But we're going to be okay because of Christ. God's love is the only thing that matters. And he holds us in Jesus Christ. Sound good? Right? So you can summarize it. You can paraphrase it. What's the one thing I want you guys to learn this morning? What's the one thing I wanted you to learn this morning? The importance of God's word. And I heard it over there. Engage with God's word, people. Show me what value it holds in your life. Can you measure? Could I measure it? If I looked at a minute-by-minute minute snapshot of your daily life and your daily routine, would I be able to measure it? Would you be able to measure yourself? What value does God hold in your life? I hope that you grow this morning. I hope that God's word has come alive for you. Right? I hope that you're challenged to maybe step out of what you have been doing or come challenge me and tell me that I'm wrong. That's fine. I'm game with that too. But it has, it has brought God's word to life for me. It's just, it's come alive as I've done it. So we've done it last summer. We did it with our, our morning team in the summer, right? Had everybody paraphrase and uh, the teens were, were getting it. And then we were talking about it after we did a passage and they paraphrased it and we talked about it and it brings God's word to life. So um, don't forget though, keep it in context. Start with prayer first. Keep it in context. If you need to, go to another source or somebody else, right? Don't go sideways with this. Just keep it in context, but use it as a tool if you can. Um, it has been a privilege being here with you guys this morning. Let me pray for you this morning. My worship team, you can come up.